Hi all, this video is going to focus on how to answer AO3 questions in A-level psychology. So when we're looking at AO3, we're looking at our ability to evaluate. Now this can include so many different things. It could be strengths and limitations, it could be studies to support or contradict, it could be real world applications, alternative explanations, we could bring in some of the issues and debates we learn on this course, we could look at methodological issues and many more. So this is why it's a really difficult skill. And what we want to get to is a point where we can start elaborating on fewer of these rather than mentioning lots of them in less, less detail. So just a reminder, remember anything four marks and above in psychology, any question, you get put into this level descriptor grid. Now this is one for evaluating Milgram's research. Despite that, it will apply to all evaluation questions. Um, the same words will come up no matter what level descriptor grid we're looking at for an evaluation question. So that is, is it detailed? Is it coherent? are we using effective terminology throughout our answer? So we want detail and depth in our answer. We want it to be coherent and flow and make sense. And we also want to be using keywords throughout it in order to get a level two response. Now, sentence starters are so important for AO3. And by sentence starter, what I mean is you're signposting to the moderator that you're evaluating. So that could be using any of these sentence starters. It could be a strength of, Although that does get boring if you keep hearing that strength of a strength of this theory the whole way through. So you could mix it up and use further academic credibility is provided by or further empirical evidence was conducted by. You could have a limitation of a study to support or a study to contradict. You need something at the start of an AO3 point to show a moderator you are starting evaluation and then they can award you evaluation marks for it. Next, we're looking at the structure of these paragraphs. So are you gonna use PEEL? You're gonna give your point, give a bit of evidence, elaborate or explain what you mean by that evidence, and then link back. Now the linking back for me is so important because that shows you not only know the findings of a study, but you can also tell us what those findings tell us about whatever topic it is you're discussing. So usually we finish with this shows that or this suggests that and then we make a link back to our AO1. Now you can also do PEELH, where you've got the normal PEEL, like we've just gone through, but you have however paragraph or part at the end. So this could be a limitation of the study, or a contradictory study, or an issue with the research. You're giving some contradictory evidence here against the point that you've already made. So you can do PEEL paragraphs, you can do the PEELH paragraphs, there's many other variations other teachers use as well. But the whole point is about having this structure to your paragraphs. It lets you plan it more effectively. It lets you write your evaluation paragraphs more effectively as well. Now, for a four mark AO3 question, I would usually suggest using two different points. It's quite hard to get four marks from one point. And if the question, question doesn't specifically ask you for one limitation or one strength and you're given this um, license to write more I would always go for two so if you look at this answer here this was about evaluating the strange situation in attachment and you've clearly got two paragraphs they look quite well elaborated from the size of them and as a moderator and as a student I can see they've made two points here and if they're well elaborated it would at least get me a level two answer so if we look at the first one, we've got this idea of ecological validity being conducted in an artificial environment, and that's fine, but that could be for any lab study ever done or observ lab observation ever conducted. And what's important in A3 is that you're linking to the question. So therefore, the next part of this answer is where it goes on to talk about it's possible that the anxiety infant show may just be due to being in an unfamiliar environment. We're starting to link our evaluation to the question. And we're ending off with always, this suggests that, and we're giving what this actually tells us. And for the second paragraph, you can see at the bottom there as well, highlighted in the box, this suggests that, and we're always trying to have this structure to each paragraph. If we look at the start, a further advantage is, and then we've got the point being elaborated on, 
and then we've got our link back at the end this shows that so every single paragraph evaluation we want to follow a similar structure so this next question looks at evaluating the behaviorist approach to explaining phobias now again it's a four mark question and we've got two points here both of them starting with a nice sentence starter a strength of this theory a major limitation is second one then there you can see ends with this suggests that and again it's just about have you got two paragraphs in those four markers nicely elaborated an issue usually with the first point is someone might put a strength of this theory is its application to therapy and then they'll say it's resulted in systematic desensitization and flooding but what we want to see in a higher level answer is how have we used the theory to create those therapies and this answer does that quite nicely it goes on to say that for example flooding prevents avoidance behavior and the negative reinforcement so that's how we're using the theory to create the therapy and again it adds that little bit more depth to our evaluation again just another four marker here just to show you four mark question use those two paragraphs of AO3 have the sentence starters a study to support the role of CBT a major limitation of CBT and then if you look at the answer for the first paragraph it's about giving the findings straight away they're not talking too much about methodology they're just talking about the findings of the study and that's what's going to get you the marks in evaluation methodology isn't going to get you too many marks and also we've got however these findings also show CBT is not a cure for depression as it did not improve symptoms by 100% so it's about trying to use a mixture of those peel peel H paragraphs in your answer now for short questions you may find it difficult to write one of those paragraphs and you might not be quite sure are you hitting the PEL structure so what you can do is you could start each point you make in that paragraph on a new line this is all one big paragraph one big point we're making but this student has gone for three separate parts of their answer so this was about a limitation for the psychodynamic approach to gender and you can see they've got their sentence starter a limitation of Freud's theory and they've made their point that it requires two parents they then started to elaborate on what Freud said Freud suggested children raised in non-nuclear families will have atypical gender development and at the end he's got the however the fact there's contradictory research and some students just prefer being able to see in front of them where their answer breaks up and that's absolutely fine to do now, a lot of students use incomplete explanation or reductionist paragraphs in their answers and that's fine as long as they're done well so if we look at this one we've got our point at the start the limitation of the biological approach for OCD is that it's incomplete then what you should do next is what does that theory focus on it states that OCD is solely caused by genetics neurotransmitter levels it ignores the role of the environment and then what I like is giving some sort of alternative explanation in this paragraph show the moderators you understand that there is something else that can explain OCD so we've got researchers found that the more traumatic life events encountered the more severe the OCD demonstrating the powerful role of nurture and then we end up with what might be a better approach it might be better to adopt some sort of dietitian stress or interactionist approach where both nature and nurture are considered so if you're going to use incomplete explanations try and include part of that alternative explanation in there as well to add more depth to your paragraph now a lot of you will use research support or contradictory research in your answers and it's one of the ones moderators like the most they like to see you understand there is research out there either supporting a theory or therapy or contradicting it but it must be done well so again in this paragraph we've got our point we've got a study to support and this is all about gender and this gender schema theory and they've gone to support the role of in-groups now what's good is in this opening sentence is they're linking it specifically to the study supporting the role of in-groups they're not just saying it supports gender schema theory as a whole they're using it as a specific part of the theory so instead of just saying a study to support the biological explanation of OCD link it specific say a study to support the role of genetics 
in the development of OCD. Be really specific in what the study is supporting. And then it gives the findings. And finally, that this shows out. This highlights how children use gender schemas and gender stereotypes. Okay, so you want to always try and follow that same structure. Sentence starter, make your point. What are the findings? What does it show us? Now, as I mentioned earlier, it can become a bit difficult using studies of the O3 because a lot of students like to give me really long methodological procedures for a study. And what you've got to realize is methodology doesn't actually get you any marks for AO3. Because all you're really doing is outlining the procedure, which is AO1. What they want to see in an exam is what part of the theory does it support or contradict? What were the findings from the study? What was the conclusion? What does it show us? Can you link it back to the AO1 you've already spoken about? Now, if we look here, this is for the biological explanation of gender development. So sorry, those of you who don't study gender, but you will be able to get an idea from the layout here. So at the start, we've got a study to support the role of testosterone on gender development was conducted by Quandango. So straight away, they've mentioned specifically this looks at testosterone. It's not just a biological approach. It's looking specifically at testosterone. Then they give the findings about monkeys who were exposed to high levels of testosterone prenatally showed more rough and tumble play. Nice finding there. And then the link back to the AO1. This shows that testosterone masculinizes the brain prenatally by altering neural pathway structure, resulting in masculine behavior. So it links back really clearly to the AO1 that they may have already spoken about in their essay. And the same for the second study as well. If you want to pause it and have a read, do. But one way of getting around that issue with the methodology is you try and link your methodology and the results together. And this student's done that really nicely in these two paragraphs. They haven't done separate methodology and then findings. They've managed to link their methodology and findings together. Now, it's also about trying to come up with ways of trying to reduce the amount of AO3 you need to remember. In psychology, there is an awful lot of potential essays that might come up, and there's an awful lot of AO3 points. So try and think while you're revising. If you've got a theory to evaluate, usually you can evaluate it using some form of alternative explanation, some sort of real world application. A lot of theories have led to successful therapies. Usually there's some form of research support. So straight away, you've got three paragraphs of AO3 for most theories on the course that you can already link back to. For most treatments, you can do a drugs compared to therapy paragraph. So you can compare that drugs are cheaper, um, therapy treats the cause rather than just the symptoms, and you can create a paragraph around that, but it must be specific to whatever it is you are focusing your answer on. You've usually got research studies. If it's drugs, for example, there's usually a drug versus a placebo study, which shows drugs are more effective. Um, you've got paragraphs you can include like, they're not actually a cure. So if someone stops taking a drug, the relapse rates are usually quite high. So it's about coming up with ways to help reduce how much you have to remember. And also during the exam, sometimes people stress and they forget things. But at least if you've got this generic plan in your head, then you've at least got some evaluation you can talk about. So the last thing I want to just say is regarding your revision and preparation for exams, I'll start by just trying to list out the AO3 points for each topic. Can I pull a topic out of a hat and then write down the AO3 points I'd include for that? Then, can you start to elaborate on them? Can you start writing out your PEEL paragraph, your PELH paragraph? Start thinking again about how to reduce your revision. Go back to that last slide on the generic points you'd include for a theory or for a treatment. And you've got to also realize that this is the most difficult assessment objective. And it's going to take a lot more time to perfect than your AO1, just learning that knowledge. Because this is more about your level of elaboration, the depth in your answer. So it will take a bit longer than the other assessment objectives. So good luck with all your preparation and the exams in the summer.